want to tell you a story about an amphibian. I know. Not right away, though. Let's start with a species closer to home and go slow. And see if we can recognize anyone we know. We never crawled out of the cave. It's not in our nature to crave too much sunshine. We never even grew eyes, but blindness has always worked fine for us. We have lungs, we have limbs, we have places to swim. We have all the fresh shrimp we can eat. We've got little hands and feet. We're nobody's masters and no slaves so why would we crawl out of our caves the slovenian cave salamander proteus anguinus was proclaimed by charles darwin who invented evolution to be a wreck of ancient life it hadn't changed a bit in several million years never really felt the need to it was nobody's food but from the point of view of evolution, this amphibian had failed to thrive. It had missed the whole point about being alive. You're supposed to have to fight to survive. But Darwin was a human, just like most of us here, except for all you aliens and the yeast and the beer. And according to him, aren't we top of the heap? <laughs> no mind that we're the only apes losing sleep over mistakes we made. Global snakes we've raised a cold red. We've let so many down and left so many dead. It's been survival of the fittest, like the man said. And speaking of ingenuity and longevity, we succeed in making the human species the public enemy of practically everybody. We funky monkeys make it highly unlikely that any future generation will see Siberian tigers on safari vacations. So Darwin's assessment of the Proteus as unenlightened and unambitious makes me slightly curious and a little suspicious, especially since these particular salamanders are also known as human fishes. And it's a little bit typical, a little predictable, the traditional views of the ones lower down writhe in the dark, while the ones higher up thrive in the light. One is wrong and one is right. The historical tendency to think in terms of black or white. Down in the cave, the human fish is white and blind. But those who crawl outside grow eyes and their skin turns black in the sunshine. Then again, turning back to the cave, they change from black to white again and once more blind. The human fish thinks with a very old mind. But then it's only ever lived with its own kind. Then skinned, forelimbed, skimming over stones, then diving deep asleep. Forelimbed with lungs, forelimbed with gills, we soak our limbs in oxygen, locate a breathing space within to facilitate communication with outer elements. There's an elemental intelligence which senses the presence of electrical currents and the delicate neurological workings of lower invertebrates. <laughs> we don't need eyes down here because it's too dark to see. And those lower invertebrates taste mighty fine to me. Proteus sanguinus is quite a bit like us, except that one of them managed to stay alive in a jar in a laboratory fridge for 12 years without food. Dude, how many of you make it through a week too? When they finally sacrificed this skinny human fish to science, they found something weird. Its digestive system had completely disappeared. That's pretty adaptable for a salamander accused of lacking evolutionary drive. He did the only thing it could do under the circumstances to stay alive, which is something human beings might have in common with the little guy. With all the odds against us, we still give it a try. 
Thin-skinned and living in a cave. Thin-skinned without any eyes. Then I used to be one of those guys swimming blind with nothing ahead and nothing behind. But somehow at the time, I didn't mind. A long time ago, Plato thought that life on Earth was akin to being chained up in a cave, with the body as a prison and the soul as its slave. Only one knowing the light beyond could be the savior of our hopeless behavior and save our sorry souls from chains of ignorance. But this imprisonment seems a little bit silly when so many stay there willingly, watching movies and shadows on the wall. This is your life, your entertainment tonight, while the reality show blows up outside. It's no wonder if a body wants to hide. But no sooner had we made it out of Plato's cave, we started steering the whole planet to an early grave. And just because we can, doesn't mean we should. We've got a groovy movie, we could try to make the ending good. So let's brainstorm here. Tell me what you envision. A nuclear family or nuclear fission? Should we slowly fade to black? or go to blinding whiteout. Should the final track blow us right out of the ballpark and off of the charts? <laughs> the sky is the limit. We could even shoot the sequel on Mars. Needs Earth when we could all be stars. Silly monkey. Those aren't stars, they're headlights and they're heading right for you. Better change your stripes or the next one will floor you and we we got more important things to do than to spend our time being sold to you. There's quite a few of us, too. We're nobody's masters and nobody's slaves. We crave the same oxygen, breathe the same ox, and then breathe again. Until the last day when there's no breath left to save. And we creep back to sleep. In our cave.